but I'm going to say you're about one inch away. <laughs> so she needs to know where her stopping point is, right? Ready? Go. Good work. Nice and slow. Good. So it helps because some people are like, I feel like I'm not really getting off the ground at all. And I'm like, really? Because you only have like one inch. And they're like, really? But then other people, they, there's no memory yet, especially if this is new to you, of how much you have to push, of how much the exertion has to be. There's no memory yet. So sometimes it's nice, right? Because she's if she would have hit my hand, that would have been like, yep, that's it. That's exactly where the shoulders <coughs> stack right under the hips, OK? So I just want you to, I can be somebody's partner if you need to. It's just a quick little 30-second little partner move just so that you have an idea of kind of where you're at, OK? And if you're brand new, somebody's going to go, you're 10 inches from my hand, <laughs> OK? And that's totally fine, because you have to start somewhere. You have to, OK? So check it out. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Try to keep your arms straight. Good. So do this for me. Rise the balls of your feet like you're going to stack your shoulders right over your wrist. Okay. Then bend your knees like something real good is about to happen. Then knock. Yep. Okay. So you want that rise, bend, flow. Yes. Good. Try to keep your arms straight. One more time. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Good, rise more. You mean to prep more, right? Prep big, big, big. Yep, look right in between your thumb. Good, switch if you haven't switched. There you go. All right, so if you haven't switched, please switch. And then land with really land with really bent knees, so you come down really light, so that you don't, so that you're not going right into the knees and the hips. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Good and nice and slow, everybody. We're gonna meet in a malasana squat. We're gonna squat it out. We're gonna squat it out. Here we are, just squatting on a Monday morning. <laughs> no big deal, just a little squat. Okay, meet Mimalas in a squat. Okay, but they still have the strength, which is good for them in this situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we are. You can move around in your Malasana squat if this feels better for you. Hands can come to your legs. You can bend your knees, you can straighten your legs. So for this next one, so teaching hops are a funny little thing because everybody in the room is at a very different place, okay? Unless it's like, you know, 10 of the same students that you've had every, everybody's in a different place. So what's nice is that in all of these positions, there are stages. So if this is new to you and you're two inches off the ground, you're two inches off the ground. If this is not to you, new to you, your neighbor might be coming all the way up into the hop and you're like, no kidding. <laughs> Yeah, but it's nice because we can all still be in the same room and practice together with all not having to be at the same level in our hops, okay? So, <clears throat> Malasana squat. <laughs> this is the shape we're going to take upside down in a second, okay? If your hips are tight, guys, your heels will be up. And that's okay. That problem will fix itself over time. Otherwise, the heels are down. But watch the chest needs to lift. Good. And make sure you can maintain a strong breath. You're just like, hey, body, this is what it's going to look like up there. <laughs> Fair warning, OK? Take one big breath in, fill up. Hands down, hips up, legs straight. Good. Now I just want you to take your feet, heel toe them so that you are about hip distance apart. And we're going to take Pada Hastasana to release the wrists. I want you to bend your knees so much that you can slide your whole hand underneath your foot. So for some of us, that means we have to bend the knees a lot for that to happen. And then we're working towards straight legs, whether they straighten out today or tomorrow or never. That's okay. But that's just what you're working towards. The head is dropped. Alex, release the neck. Yes. 
and you have the feeling in Padahastasana as if you were going to try to pull the hands out from underneath the feet. So some of the weight has to go into the balls of the feet instead of all in the heels. Okay. Drop your head. Release your neck. Ah, oh, there it is. And nice and slow, release one hand. Release the other. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, bow the body. And then just come up nice and slow and easy. Slow and easy. God, give it a moment. <laughs> okay. Ready for the next one? Hee -hee. Frog hops, they're my favorite. So I'll have you come down here. If you, there's two options. We're going to start in frog, and then we're going to start in down dog. We're going to try both, and we're going to see which one you like better, okay? So to start in frog, I'm going to come into that down dog variation with this frog at the back, okay? So I just want you to play with that for a second, see what that feels like. Find that space in the side bodies. Find your hands planting. Okay. Your heels are up, and your heels are almost together. So there's just an openness in the hips there, okay? Now check it out. I'm going to look right in between my thumbs. I'm going to rise just a little bit, bend just a little bit to find that little frog <laughs> up. And I have to land just that light, okay? If I land with legs straight, it's no bueno for my knees and my hips, okay? Look right in between your thumbs. You can come two inches off the ground or two feet off the ground. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Sound effects are helpful. Sound effects are helpful. And then when you're over it, just drop your knees and give yourself a moment. There you go. You bitch. And then so just drop your knees for a second so that your hips release. Ooh. Yeah, you think? Fires those bad boys up. So, <clears throat> some people don't like that one. If you're super tight in the hips, like you're not going to super appreciate starting in a really deep hip opener and then moving to a really deep hip opener. So the other option is to go from your downward facing dog like you just started for cannonball. Right? Look, shoulders down the back so the triceps wrap into the midline so my shoulders draw down my back. I rise, I bend, so I'm just a normal, my legs are not uh, opened up here and then I'm going to exhale. Get me up here, back down, rise, bend, here, and back down, okay? Here. So again, <laughs> this is where we're talking about that control. So trying not to just get all the way up there for the sake of, you know, and then it becomes this kind of crazy moment in time. Can we just like maybe halfway there, maybe float back down? We always joke like float like a little ninja, right? It's like this just landing like this light little ninja, <laughs> okay? But you landed with straight legs again, right? Yeah, so that's because I've started here. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, and then I'm going to come here, and then I'm going to land just like how I start, okay? <laughs> Check it out from your downward facing dog position. See if you like it better or not as fantastic as the frog to frog. Yep. <laughs> little frog legs in the air. Good. Think control. Think look right in between your thumbs. Think push the ground, pull the belly. Good, Mitch. How you doing over here, bud? How we doing over here? Back here in the corner? <laughs> Good. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Sometimes you have to have the flailing moment one time to like literally never do it again. <laughs> You're like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> okay, so what's the verdict? You like the frog to frog? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, they both suck, thanks. <laughs> I hate them both. Okay, good? Fun? Playful? 
Don't take yourself too seriously, right? Mm -hmm. There's enough out there to do that for us. We don't need to do it in here. Okay, so Pike. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> This one is, I find, only difficult because you have to function the legs as one, and in the last two, you kind of got to open them and close them and move them around a little bit. So you just have to kind of flip the switch in your brain that you're functioning these as one unit this time. So in this one, how we talked about how the hips have to go a little bit past the wrists, just like when we were on the floor, okay? So that gravity doesn't take my feet every time and slam them back down, okay? So I set it up, it's the same setup, all the three of these hops are the exact same arm, uh, shoulder girdle setup. I rise, I bend, this is the last time my legs are going to bend, as soon as they push off the ground they're going to go straight. And then light land. So they function as one unit to go straight, and then they light land, okay? They're just going to want to bend and they're going to want to go out and they're going to want to do everything you just did and it'll take a couple times for the brain to make this switch. Okay, but this one especially, good Mitch, hips up, 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 up. Can you get that forward motion? Because otherwise, if I don't have a forward motion with my hips, they just always go up and down, and up and down. And it never comes forward. It just keeps going. This way? So if I never think sacrum forward, right, if I never have this momentum, this prep, this lift, that I'm always just going to go up and down, up and down, instead of forward with my hop. Okay? Push the ground. It's who. That's why it is so important to do that momentum at the beginning. The rise, that's how, remember at the beginning of class today, I kept saying, rise the balls of your feet, bend your knees. It's this prep to start to get you to, to move forward in space. Otherwise, it's right, 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 right. You've been like doing hops for a year, and you're like, what's the problem? Okay, push the ground, scoop the low belly, hips up and forward. Check out Pike. Downward facing dog. <laughs> two inches or two feet? No big deal. Here we go. Big toes are touching, those legs are one unit. There you go, Gabby, good. Rising. Then you have to take a moment, think about what's going to happen. Good, land, light, light, light. Knees are bent, super light land. Woo! -hoo. Those are good. <laughs> what? Make sure the gaze is in between your thumbs, everyone. Make sure the arms stay straight. <laughs> you what, Tiff? <laughs> Three inches sounds good. All right, there you go. And give yourself a moment. Ha! <sighs> Roll those wrists out. Give yourself a little love. So we say, like, the reason that these are hard is because it's a lot going on. Like, you have got to push and pull and lift and remember to keep your arms straight. And remember to keep your gaze where it's supposed to be. And all these things have to fire, all these cylinders at the same time. That's what makes these challenging. That's why not everybody does handstands, because <laughs> they're kind of hard, and you've got to kind of work at them a little bit, okay? So we're going to move into split leg goodness here, before I run out of time again. <laughs> um, I think these are easier than the hops, but if you show them before the hops, the hops seem harder. <laughs> so you've got to kind of keep this in your back pocket. Um, same shoulder alignment, except this time what I'm going to do is start with my shoulders stacked. So we talk about, I think you talk about also like kind of looking over that ledge a little bit. Because you almost have to look in the mirror, because if I wasn't looking in the mirror and I was new to this, this might feel stacked to me. But until I literally look and go, yeah, that's not stacked until I get there, okay? Shoulders down my back, free my neck, look right in between my thumbs. This leg, like we talked about at the beginning, being fired up, the ball of the foot or the heel of the foot, it doesn't matter. That leg's got to be fired up, okay? The power is going to come from this leg and your belly. I'm going to take an inhale, rise to that heel, bend that knee. At the end of the exhale, I'm going to kick my bum and come back down. And I'm going to set it up again. Kick and come back down, okay? So it might not be a full kick. It might be like dink and right back down. And that's okay too. But if you kick the bum, then you can pull 
the energy into the midline. And then you're like, OK, I need a break. OK, I'm going to pull it in. OK, I need a break. Because this is a little bit harder if this leg stays straight. Because just like what we talked about, you're going to come up. Gravity is going to take this foot and go, nope. And you're like, dang. And you're going to come up. It's going to do the same thing, like, nope. So I find personal teaching preference that if I pull it in, I have a little bit more control. Pull it in, a little bit more control there. OK? <laughs> this has been a seven-year process. <laughs> it is. It's how much exertion do I need. I've done too much and almost broke a couple mirrors and sheet rocks. <laughs> So let's work that first part first. <laughs> let's just, let's just see where we're at, OK? OK, I'll show you. I'll show you. Let's just work that first, OK? So you are a shorter stance. So you go down dog, you lift one leg, and then the other foot's coming halfway up. Shoulders over my wrist, OK? Check it out. Good, so your shoulders are tight. I want you to come further wide with your hands. Yep, there you go. Good, kick your butt with your, this, with that leg, kick your butt. Bend your knee and kick your butt. Yes, see how much far forward that brought you? It takes the energy all the way in, do it again. Yes, then you straighten, reach through your feet, reach through your feet. There's your handstand. Yeah, you. Ah. Nice work, bud. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the leg, <laughs> the leg, rest for a moment. Give your shoulders a break. You can take them back here. You can roll your wrists out. You got to give a little love to your shoulders and your wrists. When you go up, especially the girls, there is a knit in the front ribs that has to happen. We are very flexible in the low back, so the ribs go And that honestly feels like a normal position for us to be in. My mom my whole life has told me that my posture is terrible <laughs> because this is just like, it's just what, where it goes. <laughs> So I have to work, especially when I go into these handstands to keep these front ribs knitting, because what it's going to do is allow me to create space across my sacrum, across my low back. That's going to free up that space. So that every time I go up, it's not that pinch in my low back, pinch in my low back. The work is easier if you do it before you leave the ground. So if you're here, right, and it feels fine to go there for me, and I have to go, nope, there. So it feels easier to work it from here versus going all the way up. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm in it. And then I'm like, oh, fix that, fix that. And then I'm like, what? You're upside down, you know? So try again this time with the opposite leg, which might feel a little bit weird for you. And that's OK. It's usually the non-dominant leg. And try to knit those ribs before you leave the ground. You're going to immediately feel the space in the low back, OK? Check it out. I want you to bring that base foot closer and bend this knee more. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yes. Kick your butt. Kick. Good. Bring it a little closer. Yes. Now move your shoulders more over your wrist before you leave the ground. <coughs> See how much there is to remember? It's just like it's so much. Good. Do it again. Stay for the breath in. Exhale, go. Nice work, girl. <laughs> nice. Okay. And then nice and slow. Woo. Let it float away like a little cloud. It's over. <laughs> Give yourself a moment. Stretch it out. So if you are at home, and you're like, listen, handstands are a little bit far down the road for me. And I would rather build.